Now that we know some of the problems we're trying to solve with Hyperflex and hyperconverged infrastructure platforms, it's important for us to see the evolution of how we even ended up with this idea of hyperconvergence. We look all the way back into the 2000s and we can start to see, okay, uh, we removed the disks from the servers and we, we had all these storage arrays develop and, and now we're trying to put the <laughs> disks back into the servers. And so let's go ahead and take a look at the progression that we saw and how exactly all these solutions came together as well as why some of them along the way were just found to be incomplete solutions relative to what hyperconvergence can offer. Back in, I'd say, the mid-2000s, we really saw a shift in how storage was performed inside of data centers because we had servers that had the disks right in them. And just like a lot of our home PCs have disks built right into them, we're storing all of our data locally here on the servers. And we found that there was some problems with this. For one, the efficiency of this storage was pretty bad. I might, for example, have on this top server, maybe I've got 75% utilization of my disk. And I say, hey, you know what? I need some more storage here. Where am I gonna get that from? And I can look at these other servers and say, wow, these two servers down here, they only have 10% and 20% utilization of their storage. And wouldn't it be wonderful if I could use all of this storage that's just sitting there idle? Except I can't because that storage lives in a different server and therefore my only solution is to go out and purchase more hard, uh, drives and install them here into the server. And I mean, maybe I could pull a disk out of this server and bring it up into here, but that usually is gonna result in more complexities than it's worth. And so we just go out and we spend more money. It's just not an efficient model. Furthermore, different policies that we deploy, uh, for example, RAID and backups. This becomes more complex when all of our storage uh, is in a lot of different places, especially if we have dozens and dozens of these servers, we've got lots and lots of disks we're trying to manage in this environment and this concept of deploying proper RAID policies and backups. And by the way, the efficiency of RAID falls as we divide it up and have multiple RAID groups across many servers. All of this becomes more challenging the larger our environment becomes. And this is why we evolved to form the storage area network and the array concept. Our first evolution of storage was to essentially or migrate from direct attached storage to this new model. And this new model brings a lot of efficiencies. We gain the efficiencies of combining all of our disks into one system that we can manage very efficiently. We can also deploy technologies like RAID and backups directly into the storage arrays and in more modern data center uh, applications, we're seeing things like data reduction. I can do data deduplication and compression and I can do that very efficiently on a centralized storage platform. And so we see a lot of benefits to deploying our storage arrays onto the storage area networks. But as we said in the last video, this creates a lot of complexities. I need to now have expertise in my, uh, on my networking team, for example, to manage the storage area network. I might also have to build out additional hardware components, and this can start to cost a whole lot of money, especially at scale. And so we did solve some of our problems, but we also created new problems that needed to start to become addressed. Now, the first attempt to solve this problem was to invent the concept of converged infrastructures. Yes, we talk about hyper-converged infrastructures, but that comes off of this phrase of converged infrastructures. I would say this hit right around the early 2010s, and Cisco was one of the leading innovators in this space. The goal of the converged infrastructure was to combine the networking and the compute and the storage all into one supportable system. However, rather than approach this from a technical perspective, the converged infrastructure concept was a little bit more of a wrapper idea meaning that we're going to develop all kinds of support mechanisms around this. I want to be able to call Cisco, for example, and get support on my storage platform, even though Cisco doesn't make a storage platform. Uh, furthermore, we'd have a lot of design support so that I wasn't left to try to cobble together my design, which down here I would have to do. I'd have to figure out, okay, what network am I deploying and what uh, servers am I deploying? and what storage array am I deploying? And all three of these might be different vendors. And so rather than have disparate solutions like that, we're deploying this wrapper around the concept to improve my supportability, uh, not just from a install and troubleshooting perspective, but even yes, from a design one. Now there are two primary approaches to the converged infrastructure. The first one was primarily uh, led by Cisco. And this was a partnership model. Cisco realized that, hey, you know what? We don't actually have a decent storage platform. We'd have to build our own, we'd have to acquire one. 
And so rather than going out and doing that, Cisco partnered with companies like EMC and NetApp. These were actually the first two uh, vendors that Cisco partnered with, and they ended up creating two separate uh, products as a result. The EMC solution was known as VBlock, and the NetApp solution was known as FlexPod. And there are quite a few differences between these two architectures, but the uh, within the scope of the DCID, we don't really need to know the nuances between VBlock and FlexPod. However, if we're designing data centers today, then we might want to study up on this a little bit. What we really need to know at this point is that if we were to combine UCS with a Nexus networking infrastructure, and then we add either EMC or NetApp into the equation, then we end up creating one of these two solutions. Again, an EMC here would be a VBlock, whereas a NetApp here would result in a flex pod. Furthermore, Cisco continued to expand on this partnership mentality, and so they started partnering with other companies like IBM and Nimble and Pure. And so Cisco actually has several of these converged infrastructure solutions available, and we can go out to Cisco's website and start to learn a little bit more about uh, what all of our options are there. So this was the first approach to a converged infrastructure. Uh, the second approach, which is what most of Cisco's competitors did, was the idea of going and performing an acquisition, meaning I'm going to buy a storage company, I'm going to add it into my existing portfolio myself. And so, for example, we saw that HP acquired Nimble, we saw that Dell acquired EMC. And so we ended up with quite a few of these vendors that ended up just having an entire solution in and of themselves. And keep in mind, one of our goals is support. And so wouldn't it be wonderful if I could call in to, for example, HP and get support on my HP servers and my HP network and my HP storage array. Now, the good news for Cisco is they had that as well with their partnership model. For example, I could actually call in to Cisco TAC and I could get support on my entire FlexPod to the point that if TAC for any reason couldn't solve the problem and really felt like the, the NetApp array was maybe causing the problem, uh, they could call up NetApp and perform a live handoff of my support ticket. And so it really was a one number to call kind of concept that I would get out of uh, some of Cisco's competitors. Now Cisco called the second approach, the acquisition approach, uh, best of brand. A best of brand approach basically says, I don't care uh, how good relatively your solution is, I want all of the best that your brand has to deliver. And so for example, if my brand of choice is HP, I would be deploying HP networking and HP servers and HP storage. And maybe I like two of those. Maybe I like the server platform that you have and I like the storage platform that you have, but maybe I'm not a big fan of your networking. I'd love to deploy Cisco network, for example. And so we look at this though and say, you know what, that's well and good, except that's not going to give us the support and the design um, options that a converged infrastructure solution has. I'm no longer deploying a converged infrastructure solution. And so I might just begrudgingly decide to deploy HP networking uh, because it's the best of brand approach. It's the best networking that HP has to offer. Now Cisco calls their approach the best of breed. And it's a little bit, I'm not going to say arrogant of Cisco. <laughs> Certainly they are suggesting that they have the best networking and the best servers. And they really believe this, and frankly, I do as well. I love Cisco data center networking. I love Cisco UCS. I think it's one of the coolest technologies out there, but they recognize that they don't have a storage product. And so rather than saying, hey, we're just gonna take the best that Cisco has to offer, instead, we're going to say, I'm gonna go out and I'm going to get the best storage array that I can, namely one of these vendors uh, is probably the, one of the ones I'm going to choose. And so I could say, hey, you know what? I love NetApp or I love EMC or one of these uh, platforms, and I say, this to me is the best of breed. It's the best storage array on the market. And so I'm going to install that into this converged infrastructure solution by Cisco, and this is why it's called best of breed. I truly have the best networking, it's Cisco. I have the best servers. This is why I said Cisco's being a bit presumptuous here, but Cisco believes they have the best server product. And now I can get the best storage array as far as what I determine is the best storage array. Now, the biggest flaw to this solution really comes down to this idea right here, is that it's not a technical solution. It is simply a wrapper, a support wrapper, a white paper wrapper. And so the complexities that exist by managing disparate systems continue to exist with a converged infrastructure solution. Yes, it's helpful to be able to call TAC and get support on my NetApp array, but it doesn't get rid of my need to support this, this entire uh, infrastructure. 
And so this is what led to a yet another evolution in the industry, which is what we call hyperconverged infrastructure. This showed up, I would say, in the mid 2010s. It uh, just depends on who you talk to and which vendor we believe was the first to market. But ultimately, uh, hyperconverged infrastructure has actually been around for a long time in some form or another. But it really started to catch market buzz again in the mid 2010s. The goal is to integrate storage into the existing systems. And so when I say existing systems, usually what I mean here is the server or maybe the compute solution. And so rather than saying, hey, I'm gonna have a storage array, we've already talked about this, all right? We're going to remove the disks and, from the storage array and place them back into the servers. However, the key here is that we're not gonna have the servers manage the disks like we did way back over here in the 2000s. This was a bad solution. However, if I have software now rather than an array, that still manages all of the disks, even though they're physically housed in the servers, well, then I get all of the same benefits. I get all of the features that a storage array can deliver. I get all of the efficiencies that I'm deploying my storage arrays to achieve. And so this concept here is what's known as that software-defined storage solution that we've already mentioned, and we'll be still going into more detail here shortly on. Now, there are plenty of software-defined solutions on the market that aren't hyper-converged itself. What hyperconverged infrastructure does is it takes software-defined networking and it performs tight integration with hardware because a true SDS solution can go onto any hardware, whereas hyperconverged infrastructure requires specific hardware. And from a hyperflex perspective, this hardware will always be UCS. And so we continue to gain all of the benefits of UCS even inside of a hyperconverged infrastructure solution as long as that solution is hyperflex. So this was quite an evolution over the course of time of how storage is deployed into our data centers. We start with this idea of moving our direct attached storage, the hard disk directly in the servers, we moved those to the storage arrays. So this is where storage area networking came from and storage arrays and we gain all of these efficiencies and benefits of all the features that arrays can provide. But then we realized that it's tough to support all of this. And so we came up with the idea of a converged infrastructure solution. And we saw there were two different approaches. Cisco took the best of breed approach, meaning you get the best of all, uh, best server and the best networking and the best storage solution, whereas other vendors went out and acquired solutions. And so we could embrace a single vendor solution and Cisco calls that best of brand and naturally favors their own solution. But in the end, the converged infrastructure, regardless of whether it was best of breed or best of brand, it didn't matter. It was really a wrapper solution, I call it. Uh, meaning that, yeah, I can get improved support and I can even get some design help with how to connect everything together and what you know products I should be purchasing, but it wasn't a technical solution. And so the technical solution that really combines all this together is hyperconvergence. Hyperconvergence relies on the software defined storage uh, architecture. It's going to place the disks back into the server. However, the difference between SDS and HCI is that HCI has tight integration with hardware. And the best news for us, especially after spending so much time studying UCS and all the benefits that UCS brings, is that Hyperflex is built on Cisco UCS. And so we're going to start to see how Hyperflex benefits from all of the uh, benefits that UCS provides. It, it can deliver all of those benefits and more by combining all this together in a hyperconverged architecture. I hope this has been informative for you. I'd like to thank you for viewing. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click here to subscribe to CBT Nuggets and click the notification bell to make sure that you're aware of every time we post new content. If you're interested in a career in IT or you want to brush up on your IT skills, then swing over to our website and while you're there, be sure to sign up for a free trial.